everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest tonight is a four-time Grammy Award-winning musician and best-selling author who is the lead singer of Wilco. Please welcome back to The Late Show, our friend and yours, Mr. Jeff Tweedy. <laughs> It's so hey, bad. Nice to see you. Good to see you. I'm excited about this book. Thank you. Okay, you, you've come on with books before. Mm -hmm. But this book really interests me. It's called World Within a Song, Music That Changed My Life and Life That Changed My Music. You, you, it's your third book, and you said that maybe you should have written this book first because yeah. it's more personal than a memoir. How so? What is the book? Uh, it's basically it's 50 songs that I have stories about, connections to. And I think it it's the thing I've thought about the most in my life, the thing that, uh, you know how when you have a song that says what you want to say to somebody mm -hmm. and you sit them down and you go like, I can't say it any better than this, you know, listen to that. Right. I think that's really strange that music can do that. You can feel so vulnerable that playing someone else's song makes you feel like, Fragile or something, you know. Well, music, like a really good song to me feels like a magic spell. Right. It has an effect at a distance. No. And an effect that cannot necessarily be seen but goes straight into someone's heart and changes them. That's, what, that's why musicians are mysteries to me, you know, how you guys do that. It's easy, you know. I think it's, <laughs> it's, it's super easy. But, uh, what, 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 do you, what do you think it's, what do you think it says about a person to know the songs they love most? Um... I, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I think there's kind of no accounting for it sometimes. You know, there are things that, that bypass our intellect and we can't help ourselves from loving. Do you always know why you love a song? Uh, well, I get asked this question a lot, like, what makes a good song? And I think people... It's not what I asked you. I, <laughs> you might be asked that a lot, but I didn't ask you that. Because well, I don't ask predictable I questions, can't remember, Jeff Tweedy. I can't remember what you asked me, so I'm going to answer the question. <laughs> It just popped into my Have head. Have you thought of running for office? Because this is what politicians do. I have thought about it. And, okay. And that's, I'm right. honing that Okay, skill. okay, good. I'll get you there. <laughs> um, you know, I think, that, I think that what I'm answering is sort of close to what you were wanting me to answer. The audience will judge. Yeah, well, <laughs> people ask about you know, what makes a good song, and people spend a lot of time thinking about the authenticity of the, the artist. Mm -hmm. And I think that a good song is, the song is something that makes you feel authentic that makes mm. the listener feel mm. like they their emotions the, the way that they you know interpret something is valid because someone else uh, agrees or is there is, seen. Is, is there a first song that <laughs> they think they think you answered the question <laughs> <laughs> told you they think I they answered the question told you okay i'll get you mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Does anybody look at this book and go, how could you leave out X, Y, or Z? Have people gotten like... Yeah, yeah. There's some pretty egregious omissions, you know? Like, yeah. You know, like, there's no John Prine in there. There's no John Prine. There's no Neil Young. I mean... Wow. Yeah, right? Wow. <laughs> wow. I had to leave some incentive to write another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to ask me to write another one, maybe. And now... Did, the, some of the songs uh, in here are, you know, more, more famous and more, more popular than others to people. Is, is there a first song that really had an impact on you that, that, that set you on your path toward becoming a musician? I mean, a lot of them. I mean, I, I don't remember ever wanting to do anything else but be around music. Uh, so I can't really pinpoint a first song that made me want to, you know, be a musician. But I know that uh, I saw The Replacements live mm. when I was really pretty, in a pretty influential age. Uh, and they were opening for a band called X. And, and there was hardly anybody there. It was in St. Louis, Missouri. And Paul Westerberg fell off the stage during the first song. <laughs> and you said, I want that life. I did. I said, <laughs> that looks like fun. <laughs> I noticed you've, you've, got, you've, you've got some heavy hitters in here. Smoke on the Water is in here. Yeah. What's your first? Because I had mm -hmm. an original 
pressing of Machine Head. Yeah. Which is, you know, that, you know. It well, comes, my cousins yeah. have that. And it's, Highway it's, stars on there. Yeah, it scared me. It scared you? Well, my cousins scared me. Oh, <laughs> older cousins, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, not really, but they, they, one of them was into Alice Cooper, and that was scary for a little kid at the time. Sure. Yeah, I was a little too young for that. Mm -hmm. Especially when he told me that Alice Cooper cut his own head off during their show. <laughs> there were great Alice Cooper rumors when we were kids. You know, like, but he was like telling me like this. Yeah. You know, the rumor that I heard when I was a kid, like when I was in elementary school, because Alice Cooper was big and he was like the embodiment of all evil for parents, was that he filled balloons full of maggots and floated them over the audience and then would pop them so the maggots wow. would down on the audience. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, isn't it? We're gonna do that. <laughs> At the next Roco show? Yeah. We have to take a quick break, but stick around. We'll be right back with more. Mr. Jeff Tweedy, everybody.